Hi, Digital Makers. Christina here from the Raspberry Pi Foundation team. Thank you so much for joining me for another Digital Making at Home adventure. This week's adventure is Make Us Laugh. So we've loved seeing your games, we've loved seeing your stories, and we can't wait to see your jokes this week. So I'll be doing our intermediate level project. I'm really excited because this project involves hardware. So get out those Raspberry Pis, get out those LEDs, those wires, we are going to use them. Now remember, we have a beginner project, we also have a more advanced project. So find a project that fits your level. We want you to have fun. So let's jump in. Starting here, this is our projects page at the Raspberry Pi Foundation. You can always check out projects here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take us directly to our project, which is rpf.io forward slash dm hyphen rainbow. So we're gonna be doing the Dancing Unicorn and Rainbows project. It's an awesome project. We're gonna be creating an LED rainbow and we're gonna make a unicorn dance, all using the Raspberry Pi. So what you're gonna need, we're gonna have, we have a few materials that we're gonna need. You can see them here. I'm gonna go over them. I'm gonna go over the hardware that we're gonna need and the software that we're gonna need. So I'm gonna go ahead and change my camera so you can actually see the hardware that I have so we can get ready to code. All right, switching cameras so we can talk about the hardware that we need to do this project. But don't worry, I'm still right here. So we need a Raspberry Pi. So I'm using my Raspberry Pi 4. We'll be using a breadboard. We'll also be using all of those colorful LEDs that you have lying around. So make sure, grab as many colors as you have. Then we'll need resistors. So resistors that are at least 100 ohms and make sure you have the same number of resistors as you do LEDs. Then we're also going to need our jumper wires. So I'm gonna be using our male to female jumper wires and our male to male jumper wires. So make sure you have all those. Awesome, okay, so those are the main um, electronic components I will be using. If you have buttons or sensors, I'll talk a little bit about those at the end and you can add those as maybe an extra challenge to your project. So now let's make sure we have the software that we need for our project. All right, so we have our hardware. Let's get our software ready. So I had just turned on my Raspberry Pi 4 and so this is my desktop. So on the Raspberry Pi 4, we're gonna open up Scratch 3. So to get to Scratch 3, I'm gonna go to my applications menu here, the top left, go to programming, and then go to Scratch 3. Now, if you don't see Scratch 3, that likely means one of two things. Either you're on a Raspberry Pi 4, but you need the latest version of Raspbian, so make sure you have that, or you're on a different model because Scratch 3 only works on Raspberry Pi 4. Totally fine. If you wanna do this on Scratch 2, I just recommend you go back to the projects page open up the Unicorns project and click on there is a Scratch 2 version and you can code along with me that way. So let's go ahead, we'll open up Scratch 3. And then on Scratch 3, um, we're gonna be adding an extension to our project to make sure that, so we can code on the Raspberry Pi. So when I go ahead and click on extensions in the bottom left, I'm now gonna add the Raspberry Pi GPIO extension and um, for those of you with some additional like other electronics, maybe you have a button or a sensor that you might want to try out, you can add the Raspberry Pi Simple Electronics extension as well. And you see that'll add um, a couple of really fun blocks that you'll be able to use. All right, so we have our hardware, we have our software, let's get started. So what we'll be doing in this project is we're going to be using the GPIO pins to code our LED. So GPIO is an acronym that stands for General Purpose Input and Output. And a Raspberry Pi has 26 GPIO pins. So these allow you to send and receive on and off signals to and from electronic components. So in this case, our LED. We are going to be coding it, which is awesome. Now, if you look at the Raspberry Pi, like I said, it has 26 pins and each pin has a number and there are additional pins that have voltage and also ground connections. So to know which ones those are, I actually have a handy little device. This is a reference board that I'm gonna put on here that tells me 
which pins are which. And I'm going to zoom in so you can see. So you'll see here I have my voltage pins, 3.3, 3.3 volts, 5 volts. I have my ground pins, and then I have my numbered pins. So we're going to be using um, a lot of these today, which is really awesome. So for example, our voltage pins here, like our 3.3 and our 5 volts, anything connected to these pins is always going to get power. So it'll either get 3.3 volts or 5 volts. Then you have our ground pins. So anything, this is used to complete a circuit. So we'll use ground pins um, a lot today. And then we have our um, regular number pins. So we'll also use those and that's what we're going to be coding. We'll be coding a specific numbered pin. So let's do this. Let me zoom back out and let's connect our LED to our Raspberry Pi. All right, so let's get our materials. We've got our breadboard, we've got our resistor, our LED, and we are going to be using male to female jumper wire. So I'm going to have these two here. Move them so you can see all of our items on the screen. All right, so let's first start. We're going to look at our LED and we're going to see that one leg of our LED is a little bit longer than the other. The long leg is the positive leg, which is also called the anode, and it should always be connected to the positive side of a circuit. And the short leg is the negative leg, which is called the cathode, and that needs to be connected to the negative side. And the way I remember this, and it's also important just that with a circuit, your circuit, you want it to go from positive to negative, and that's really important to remember. And I'll remind you of it as we're building our circuits. All right, so let's go ahead and make our first circuit. So starting with the LED, we're gonna go ahead and put that in our first row. I'm gonna take the longer end, the positive end of my LED, and go ahead and put that in E1 on my breadboard, and then put the negative end across this little ravine here in G1. Then I'm going to get a resistor, and I'm gonna bend it a little bit so it fits, and I'm going to put that into the same row as my negative LED, the negative end of my LED. So I'm going to go ahead and put that here. And then I'm going to put the other end in another row. So I'm putting it in row five. So you can see that there. Now I need a male to female jumper. I'm going to go ahead and connect with my 3v3 pin and I'm going to go ahead and put and like I said we want our charge we want our current to flow from positive negative so we know this is the positive end here so this is my current right there that's my voltage so I'm going to go ahead and put that in the row connecting it to my positive end of my LED so that's my first row there and then I'm going to add in um, my other male to female jumper wire and put the same, or put the um, male end into the same row as my resistor here. There we go. And then put my female in onto a ground pin. Remember that completes our circuit. So let's see. All right. Do you guys just see that? All right. High five. <laughs> we just got our circuit. So this is great because it tells me that our circuit is complete, it tells me that our LED works, which is awesome. So now we can move into actually coding our circuit. So I'm gonna switch cameras so we can see um, those pieces together. Great, so we have Scratch and we have our Raspberry Pi. And I'm excited about this step because we're now gonna connect the two. So. What we're gonna do now is in, in the previous step, we had connected our LED to pin 3v3. So I'm actually going to move this wire to a pin um, that I'm gonna be able to control with scratch. So that's gonna be one of our numbered pins. So I'm gonna move it to GPIO 17. So our light is now off and that is totally fine. We're going to turn it on by coding in scratch. So let's go ahead to scratch. I'm gonna start with an events block. I'm going to go to the when the green flag is clicked I'm gonna pull that block over. And now I'm gonna to go to our simple electronics extension. 
um, a Raspberry Pi Simple Electronics and pull over the block. I'm going to drag the block turn LED on and I'm going to do, I'm going to grab two of these. And as you know from, if you watched the video before, what I like to do is I like to take all the blocks over before I connect them all. And so I'm going to grab one more block. I'm going to grab the wait um, one second block. So now I'm going to connect these together. And as I mentioned, we have now moved our wire. So our LED is now connected to a specific pin, the GPIO 17 pin. So I need to change that. I need to indicate that in my code. So I'm going to go ahead and make, have, turn, change this to turn LED 17 on. So 17, I'm going to turn this on. And then I'm going to have this turn 17 off. It was neat because I'll be able to see it actually blinking. So this is a start to getting our light, our LED to blink. And I'm going to have it wait. All right, so moment of truth. I'm going to connect all of our blocks. So let's click our green flag. Make sure to check out my LED. Let's see if it works. <gasps> yes! All right, it works. That's great. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, let's test it one more time. Yes, all right. So our LED, it blinks when we click the green flag. This is very exciting. So now that we've gotten your LED to light up, play around with it. Change up some of your code. Maybe change up what your control block is. You can try out... Um, different blocks, or sorry, your events block. Maybe you can try out using one of the keys on your keyboard. Also, you can change up the amount of time that your LED lights up for. Maybe make it longer or shorter, or try um, making your LED run continuously, actually setting it up to blink. I'll go ahead and give you a hint for how to do that. So what I'll do here, and we've done this in some a past video, but if you're new, what we can do is we can add a forever loop. So I can add a forever loop here and then add in this code. So right now I have it where my LED light turns on for one second and then turns off. So I can add this into a forever loop and run that. And you see it's actually blinking, which is neat. And what I want to do is actually to make it um, have a, like a stronger blink, <laughs> for lack of a better word, we're going to add in another wait um, one second. And then now let's run it. So it should turn on, it'll wait, and then it'll turn off and it'll wait a second. Awesome. So now I have a blinking LED, which I just coded with my Raspberry Pi and Scratch. Make sure, give yourself a high five. This is, this is exciting, especially if this is your first LED. That's a, it's a big accomplishment. So congratulations to you. All right, so zooming back into our Raspberry Pi, we are now going to create our rainbow. So you see, I've brought in my additional LED colors. I have my resistors, and you're also gonna make sure that you have your jumper wires um, to connect all of the colors. So to start, what we're going to do is we're gonna rearrange um, our breadboard a little bit. We're gonna rearrange the circuit um, to make room for the other colors and to have it so that all of our LEDs are gonna share one ground pin. So to do that, I'm gonna take my yellow jumper wire. You see here, that's the one connected to the ground pin on my Raspberry Pi. And I'm going to move that over to this rail on the breadboard. So I'm going to move it to right there. So the project has a really great diagram, but essentially this rail here, all of this is connected. So now this has become the spot for my ground pin. So this wire has just made this rail my ground for all of my other circuits, which is great because if you have a lot of colors, you may actually not have enough ground pins on the Raspberry Pi. So now we, we can use this part of the breadboard, this rail on the breadboard as our ground for all of our circuits. So I also need to organize the rest of my circuit. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna move my purple cable down to um, the second row or like the second bar and then also move my LED as well and then move my resistor and my resistor needs to connect to the same rail as the ground jumper 
wire into the same bar as the LED. So here it is, it's going to connect to the same rail right there, and then it's going to connect to the same bar. So this is the bar right here. So I can connect it into any of these. So I'm going to go ahead and put that there. And now I have my circuit. So let's go ahead and connect um, some more lights, some more LEDs. Okay, so we're back to scratch here with our lovely rainbow. And yes, I recognize these are not all the colors of the rainbow and not even in the right order, but we're at home and we're doing the best we can. So this is my rainbow and I encourage you to bring whatever rainbow you have so you code it and make it amazing. So we're in scratch now. And right now the code that we have in scratch, just a reminder, I'm gonna go ahead and run it, only causes our blue LED to blink. So let's actually add some code and turn on all of our LEDs. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this. Let's just, yeah, we'll get rid of that and start fresh. And let's go ahead, we have four LEDs, so let's go ahead and pull in four of these blocks. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and turn them all on. Let's make sure they all work. So we have to check, so my blue LED is, that is GPIO 17. My green LED is GPIO 18. My red LED is GPIO 23. And my yellow is GPIO 24. And you remember, you might have the same as me or yours might be different. So check where your jumper wire is connected on the GPIO pins. So let's go ahead and run that. Okay, yes, all right, so all of my circuits are connected and my lights are turning on. This is great. All right, so feel free like take now take the code and create your own pattern. Do you want the rainbow to all light up at once? Do you want it to blink? Do you want every other color to light up? Take it and make it your own. All right, and lastly, we're gonna go ahead and add in the unicorns. I know you've been waiting, like when are these unicorns gonna come? So let's go ahead, we're gonna go ahead and add a sprite. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the um, Raspberry Pi camera, make it a little smaller and move it over so it's not in our way here. Let's go ahead, we're gonna add in a sprite in Scratch here at the bottom. All right, let's go ahead and add in that unicorn. And you know what I just realized is that I did my code for the rainbow um, with the cat, with cat, um, with Scratch the cat. So what you can do is you can actually, when that happens, which happens to me all the time, you can duplicate your code and then you can drag it over and you'll see here, you'll see the unicorn, you should see it like shaking. So when it shakes like that, I can click and it'll add in. Oh, it didn't work that time, let's try it again. So you can see it and it'll shake and I can add it in to the sprite. Okay, awesome. So now that code is with the unicorn. So I'm gonna keep that there and I'm gonna go ahead and delete um, the cat. All right, so we've got our unicorn. And now what I do is I wanna make it dance. So I'll go ahead and give you um, a hint for how you can do that. So what we need to do is we have to have um, different costumes. And so in this case, let's check out the costumes for this unicorn. You can do that with the second tab up here. So we see this unicorn only has one um, costume. So what we can do is we can duplicate this sprite and we can go ahead and make another uh, costume for it. So what I'm gonna to do to make it look like it's dancing, I'm gonna go ahead and highlight some of the parts of this unicorn and modify it so it looks like the unicorn is moving. So you see here, I'm just like clicking on the leg, modifying, I'm also, I think the head will be good, having its head, oops, sorry, having its head go up and down. Okay, so now we've modified it. Let's go ahead and add in some code. So similarly to my LED lights, I'm gonna go ahead and use the events block. So when the green flag is clicked, I'm going to use a forever loop. We're gonna have it, I'm gonna wait and have this be half a second so it's faster. And then I'm gonna change the look. So I'm gonna to go to a look, our look blocks and I'm gonna have it switch to the next costume every half a second. So let's see how that looks. 
All right, so it looks like our unicorn is dancing, which is awesome. We've got our unicorn dancing, we've got our lights. So what you can do now is that you've, it's set up so that um, when the green flag is clicked, both your LEDs and your unicorn will take action. So think about, remember this week, our theme is making us laugh. Hey, this is already a really fun project, it's super cute. And if you wanna add in other sprites, if you wanna think about the pattern, maybe your lights light up with the unicorn. But ultimately, we want you to have fun with this project. So make sure like to enjoy yourself. Like I said, add in some sprites, um, add in a pattern. Maybe you can add in some more dance moves for the unicorn. I started it pretty simply. And we can't wait to see what you create. So <laughs> let me, I'll put my face up to say bye. So yeah, thank you so much for joining me today. And I can't wait to see how you make us laugh this week. Have fun and see you soon. Bye.